I clicked on images and I saw something called the hero's journey. And I was like, you know what? I feel like I've heard about that before. What is this crazy thing called the hero's journey? Do you like rules when it comes to writing and telling stories? Are you very much a stickler for the rules? Whether it's the hero's journey? Um... Oh, me and rules, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know you grew up in the Bay Area. People in the Bay Area like to put yeah. myself included. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. so you know, you know. Yeah, rules are... Uh... <laughs> I really fought rules because I was like, oh no. I just feel this inherently. I'm just going to put it down. Because the first talks that I ever wrote, the first speeches I ever wrote for, were for TEDx Orange Coast. I wrote eight of them. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, uh, I know how to tell a story, but I didn't really know how do you get the person's life from point A to point B to, to the end, right? And so I would get halfway through the script and by the way, I had to turn around a lot of the scripts in two to three weeks, eight of them. Wow. So I didn't have much time. And I was working seven days a week and like, I better figure this out. Oh my goodness. Right. <laughs> and um, so the rules were, I was anti-rule, really. And then uh, one day I was working on a, on a speech um, for this TED talk, one of them, and I wanted to do this woman justice. I just adored her. Her name's Amy Purdy, and she and I were collaborating together. And I just thought, I've got to do this justice. What? How do I tell a story? You know, we were in there, we were doing stuff, but we, I, uh, it just wasn't hitting the mark. And so I said, okay, Google, let's look at my eight, magic eight ball. Let me just shake it and see what comes back. And I just typed in story arc. And all of a sudden, I clicked on images and I saw something called the hero's journey. And I was like, you know what? I feel like I've heard about that before. What is this crazy thing called the hero's journey? And I looked at the visual. It's a beautiful visual. Somebody had taken their time to really show me all the steps. And I was like, wait, this is how, I, this, is how this works. I can do this. This is exactly what I need. Amy had eight minutes. TED Talks are often 18 minutes, but she only had eight minutes. That's what they gave her. And some of my other speakers had 12 minutes and, you know, which four minutes is a huge difference. <laughs> Let me tell you, eight is tight. And so I was like, I can do this. I can cross the threshold with her story. This is wonderful. And we did it and her talk went viral. And so this was back in 2011. And it was affirmation for me. And I was like, I don't know these Hollywood people this way but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I started following that for certain people. I started using the hero's journey and because there are, there are emotional beats in there. And I noticed that my speeches were following those beats. I would just look over. I'd be like, is this going the way it is? I would find it. I would just mirror them and they could almost cross map. And what was beautiful about that is that the, the people I tend to work with, the speakers I tend to work with, and especially now, now that I've been doing this a long time, I'm really, I really want beauty out in the world and I want my speakers to disseminate that, that beauty, which they already have in them, right? And the hero's journey really does that because the audience doesn't hear the speaker they hear what the speaker has been through, but they only think about themselves and what they've been through in relation to what that speaker has been through. So, you know, speakers will be like, I don't know if I can say that. And I'm like, it's not about you. The audience is going to say, oh my God, I went through that too. You know, or my mother went through that or someone I knew or, you know, and they, they start to, they hear your story, but in relationship to themselves. And so that, that hero's journey has been incredibly important. Um, in, in, in the storytelling process. Can you give me an example of how you used some of the, the parts of the hero's journey to work with Amy's speech? Was there like one part in particular that you really sort of worked on together? I'm not quite sure of Amy's story, forgive me. Maybe you can share some of it. So Amy Purdy's story, oh, spoiler alert, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> if you haven't seen the, okay. the talk, Thank you. stop the video now. <laughs> 
<laughs> go Google Amy Purdy TED Talk <laughs> and watch it. It's only eight minutes and then come back. Uh, so essentially, Amy's story is that at 19, she contracted meningitis and she died essentially and then was brought back. But she'd gone to the hospital. She, it, what it does, it, she was so advanced in it that the the um, body tries to save the organs and the blood rushes from it. So uh, r rushes from the vital organs and your hands turn purple, her feet turn purple, her cheeks and nose. And when it happens, it's like frostbite. And so when they got her to the hospital, um, it was touch and go. She, she actually did pass away very briefly and they wow. brought her back. Um, but it was touch and go for a long, long time. And then um, in the end, they had to, uh, to amputate her legs from the ankles down mm -hmm. or the calves down and uh, both of them. And, but everything else was saved. I mean, she did have a lot of other, she lost hearing in her ear. She had oh, all wow. of these issues. So here she was, this story, and she'd done a lot already at this point. You know, she had been in a Madonna video and she'd done all these things. But I had to, because she'd done so many things, I had to weigh and measure what was important in the story. And that's where I had to trust my intuition and where I could actually look at this guide of the hero's journey because her life story, this particular incident fit perfectly in it. So it isn't a life story. It's not an autobiography. It's a moment in time and a great speech is. It doesn't try to cover too much. It's a very narrow subject. And this narrow subject for Amy was her life, this life where she no longer, she had to let go of the old Amy to embrace the new Amy. And we wrote that in there. And every time she goes, every, every time I say that line, I cry. And I was like, good, yay. <laughs> but that was the middle part of the hero's journey. The very point where she then begins to embrace the journey that she's on. So even though you go over the threshold, right, you go through the steps of, and I can't remember all of them, but there's that low point in the circle, right? And that's where she began to rise like a phoenix from the ashes. And she began to bring back what she learned, of course, to cross back over and bring the elixir back um, to the world, which was a speech. So it was really about her experience and what she learned and the struggles that she went through and how hard it was, but yet how she wouldn't change a thing, right? And so I had to figure out, do we keep the Madonna video part in there? Because my speakers use slides, right? The majority, I think I've only worked with a couple who have not. Mm -hmm. um, and high resolution photos, I don't, occasionally I let them use text if it's important to the story. But the, the images are wallpaper that really um, helps the emotion stick. So the story will be stickier if the, if the resolutions and the photos of the resolution, the resolution of the photos are, are super em emotional, the photos themselves. And she had a lot of emotional photos. And so uh, we chose the, the most important parts of the story. So we had to take them, the audience low to the lowest point to bring them back up again in the journey where she was resurrected. And that is, it, it was quintessential hero's journey. And I don't know who posted that, but I need to send them a thank you note. Because <laughs> I just devoured that. I didn't read anything about it. I just used that chart. So I'm eternally grateful to the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell and, and, um, and whoever posted that beautiful um, rendering of, of the steps. So she does the TED Talk and then What's the response within oh. what amount of time? So this is so exciting because it's a TEDx talk, right? So this is 2011 and, and she's like, okay, I did the talk. It's been posted. It took like a month before they posted it. Great. And this was probably, so we did it in May. It probably went up in June. Crickets. Kitty, kitty, kitty. She got about 20,000 hits and through December. And then I think it was in December, uh, all of a sudden, she calls me like completely worked up. Oh my God, Barbara, what? She goes, go look at the TED Talk. 
they had taken the TEDx talk and put it on the TED page. Oh. And they don't do that anymore, but they, they did it for her. And so that's where you can see it is on the TED page. They put it on the TED page. And once that happened, it went viral. Wow. And she's like, people are writing in Arabic. Like a month later, <laughs> it just started going everywhere. And we were watching it tick through like, you know, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 by the hour. And we're like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And yeah, so she just captured the hearts and minds of so many people, her story. And it, it's, it's a remarkable story. And she's a re remarkable woman. Just a really beautiful on the outside, but equally as beautiful on the inside.